I have the privilege of talking about Hoggett School here in Ames, Iowa. In 1846, Iowa became a state. Shortly thereafter, in 1853, Nevada was selected as the county seat, and it, of course, had much more population than a little nearby village. And in 1861, not only did the Civil War start, but Hoggett School was built. Mr. May became, Henry May became the first uh, teacher of Ames Public School because before that it was a country school and in 1867 it became Ames's first public school. Unfortunately and fortunately, it only was open as the public school for a year. The fortunate part of that was Ames by this time was really expanding in population. And so one school was not enough for the community. So they abandoned Hoggett School. It became part of a dwelling place at 1008 um, South 3rd Street. During that time, it, be, it was used as part of the kitchen of the, in other words, the interior room of a home. And it was then pretty much forgotten by just about everybody. Now, we fast forward to 1981 and Farwell Brown, the Ames historian was really concerned. Where is Hoggett School? And I've been told that this is what he did. He studied intently pictures, especially focusing on the church spire in these very old photos. And he looked and looked and said, I know I can find that school. So went downtown and knocked on doors and said, I need to see inside your house. And fortunately, people let him inside and at one house, he said, I hit the jackpot. Here is Hoggett School. And so he talked with Mike Rollins and said to him, you know, this is a very old school. It was used from 1862 to 1868, and we need to preserve it as an important part of Ames history. This is the very first public school in Ames, Iowa. Won't you let us have this so we can restore it and preserve it? And Mike said, well, I really want to remodel this uh, space, so you may have it, but here's the conditions. You need to be responsible for the cost and actually moving it and also of preserving it and restoring it. And Farwell Brown said, yes, you have a deal. We will do that. And thus was born the Ames Heritage Association. And it celebrated in 1982 by having a very large celebration of uh, 
dignitaries and speeches and celebration that public uh, Hoggett School had been restored to as close as they could get it to the original structure. And that indeed was a day of celebration. And Farwell Brown was responsible for making that come about with a whole wide group of volunteers who helped in that tremendous effort to move it to the grounds at Meeker School. What was it like to be a student in 1862 in Hoggett School? Well, here's the things, some of the things that I've learned about teaching at that time. One of the things was there was very strict discipline. Remember, there was only one teacher and there were children from at least first grade through eighth grade in that one classroom. So you had to have strict discipline if things were going to happen. In addition to that, the teacher's goal was to meet with every student in every one of the subject matters, and it was called branches in those days. And so the teacher would meet with each child in each subject for five to ten minutes at a time and this really kept the teacher busy. She didn't have time to spend time uh, disciplining or even paying attention as, uh, or answering questions to children that were working at their desk. So there was a great deal of seat work going on and that was individual seat work. And they were often working on what they would be reciting to the teacher there was a great deal of emphasis upon recitation. And when they recited, children were admonished to not only sit up straight and tall in their desk, but also when they spoke to speak very clearly so that everyone could understand and that they would present a favorable image of themselves. And so they would recite to the teacher every day. That also meant while they were at their desk, they would be memorizing a lot of things. Do you know they memorized entire poems and, and complete stories? And they committed that to memory so that they could recite it out loud. And that was really a great deal of discipline. It took a lot of focus and energy on the part of the children. And maybe you're wondering, why did this work? Frankly, I think it in part worked because the parents were supportive of whatever the, the teacher would do or say or the kind of discipline that the teacher would use in the school setting. And, do you know, it really didn't hurt at all that they had siblings at school. And so before the other sibling got in the house, mom and dad already knew what happened at school that day. And you could be sure whatever happened that the teacher, um, whatever discipline the teacher used, it probably was twice as much at home because there was that kind of connection. And children were expected to be quiet, respect their elders, to listen, and not be acting out as sometimes we see today. Those were very different times. So, how does that compare with what's going on in Hoggett School today? Well, one class at a time comes to Hoggett and there's somewhere between 20 and 25 students in the class 
with a teacher and some aides sometimes, sometimes some parents come along. And uh, it's often a third grade classroom that attends. And during the time they're there, because of the emphasis on teaching today, on interaction and involvement of the children, and also because children just don't have the attention span that we, uh, I think they had in those times for a variety of reasons. Um, there is a lot of experience on uh, doing hands-on learning. What does that really mean? Well, to learn about recitation in reading, I will give children a poem and give them a chance to read it so they haven't committed it to memory like those children did, but they come up in front of their group and then read it aloud in their best voice and read it as smoothly as possible. And we talk about what is a positive way to recite lessons in front of your group and your peers. And then um, I give them story problems that were similar to those in math that the children would have done at that time. And then we also, and this often is a highlight of the uh, trip, is to use slate pencils with slate boards like was used during the time children were attending school at Hoggett. And we will practice writing and then they will have, uh, practice the numbers and Spencerian handwriting was used at that time. Now obviously with five or possibly ten minutes of practice you're not able to do Spencerian because it is the most beautiful handwriting I've ever seen. It's very filled with curves and flourishes and sometimes it's so elaborate it really is artwork. If you haven't, uh, if that's something you're interested in, check it out, Spencerian penmanship. It is really lovely. And then we talk about the kinds of chores that children did at that time, the lunches that they had, um, the fact that they, uh, some of the children, two of the children at a time would take a pail and go to the nearby farmhouse, which by the way was the farmhouse, and they would walk to the farmhouse, get water, and bring it back to Hoggett School. And um, they would uh, play games outside. And if we have enough time, if the children are at school long enough, we will play games outside that are like those games that the children played in the time of Hoggett. Some of the really, um, oh, games that they really get into are several kinds of uh, tags. One is a squat tag that you can be home free by just squatting down and you get three of those. Uh, we also play drop the handkerchief. Do you know today's children don't play drop the handkerchief? Most of the children have never played that game before. And they always love Auntie Auntie over throwing the ball over across the top of the school house in two teams and then they tag each other and it primarily ends up to be just a, a, a running game with lots and lots of laughter enjoyed by all. So those are some of the things that we talk about as well as uh, a little bit of history. We talk about the first teacher, Sarah Emery, and the second teacher, Charles May. We talk about the flag and the 34 stars on the, the flag that was used, and we have that flag in the building. We look at the lunch pails. We look at the stove 
that was used to um, heat the building and talk about what it would be like. If you were sitting right next to that stove, it might be really warm. However, if you were at the outer skirts of that room, it might really be cold. And sometimes the children would even put their lunches right next to the stove that the teacher had fixed early morning so that their lunch would be thawed in time to eat at noon. Those are some of the things that we talk about and the children always have wonderful questions that they share and ask and I treasure those because then it gives me an opportunity to know what the children are thinking about and gear their experience to those questions. After a class is visited, sometimes I receive um, feedback from each one of the students and they come in the form of a letter to me and a drawing and it's really great to look through them. Um, you learn, I always learn a lot from it. Here's one that I thought I would share with you. It reads like this. Dear Ms. Phillips, I like Hoggett School. I learned that girls and boys went in separate lines. I also learned that they drank from the well. Two children went to the nearby farm to get it. If you were late to school in the morning, you would have to stay outside until recess your friend and then you can see an example of the picture and I have a whole folder from this entire class and that really helps you thinking about how can I even make this experience better for the children because we want to preserve our past and make it sustainable into the future and that's why we care so much about Hoggett School and having a love of history and that's what we try to share while we're at Hoggett School and through the other activities that we do through the Ames Historical Society. Okay, after, Har our, after Farwell Brown found Hoggett School uh, and began to dream of restoring it, he needed a place to put it, so he went to the Ames School District and negotiated a deal. Uh, the school district agreed to provide a place uh, for the school and Farwell said that uh, he would or organize, uh, uh, he would actually start an organization to undertake the big project of restoring it. So Hoggett School as it exists today is a partnership between the, the Ames Community School District and the Ames Historical Society. The school district maintains the grounds and uh, continues to provide the land on which the school sits. And the Ames Historical Society uh, provides the maintenance, takes care of the school, and um, uh, finds a curator uh, uh, such as the wonderful Carol Phillips and um, uh, provides special events and programming. The um, uh, school, as far as we know, will probably continue to sit on the grounds of Meeker School, although there are some dreamers who have uh, this lofty idea of creating a, a historical complex in a single location that would include moving Hoggett School and other historic structures to a single location. Um, that's still pretty much in the visionary dream stage. Uh, but until then, Hoggett School will remain at Meeker. Uh, we have plans to try to uh, create uh, curriculum guides and um, uh, 
a notebook for each school, each of our elementary schools in Ames, so that the teachers would have that as a reference guide. And uh, in preparing to come to Hoggett School, they would have those materials handy and that they would know all of the ways that uh, the history of early Iowa education could be presented in a visit to Hoggett School. Um, we open the school in the summertime uh, just to any visitor that would like to come. And we are planning to uh, create special events every weekend that it's open so that if someone wanted to come one weekend and learn about um, schoolyard games during the Civil War era, they could come and do that. If they wanted to come and practice uh, writing on a slate, they could do that. If they wanted to come and hear stories that would have been told during the time of the Civil War, they could do that. Perhaps songs. The themes could be endless, but we have uh, a very exciting list of ideas about how we could create really engaging programming for the residents. So those are things that are coming up in the future. And um, of course, the most important thing is maintaining the little structure in good condition. We've had the help of wonderful experts who provided good information so that we can keep the school in the best possible condition. We just recently did some um, repairs to the floor and the door area and provided a new railing as you walk up the steps into the school. And we're excited about those improvements because we know that it will help Hoggett School last for a good long time.